Shalom. First and foremost, I'm give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kodash, the ones of the apostles, the bishop, elders, great millstone, peace and salutation to the elect, which starts with 144,000, which are the prophets of the Lord, and also you men, women, and children who believe on Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, through the words of the prophets, I say salutations and salute. First and foremost, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, the name of the only begotten Son, our Lord, King, and Savior, Yahweh Shai. And they're the power of the Israelites, and today they will be the so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans. And also you speckle bird Israelites, you Israelite foreigners who will look like the other nations. But your spirit and bloodline goes back to the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This Bible is for you. And with that being said, I want to get into a lesson in Lord will is edifying and exhorting. And it's going to be like a little exhortation. Some of the spirits gave me, you know, because, you know, as we get closer to the end, you know, brothers, and even some of you sisters of men, you brothers, man. You're going through trials and different tribulations and, you know, the fire is getting heavy, all right? So these little lessons, you know, the exhortations that jump on the apostles, the brothers, you know, is needed, man, right? Because at the end of the day, man, those of us of the whole four elect that believe in this truth, we have a lively hope, okay? And don't worry about your current situation. You know, of course, we pray to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai for our daily things. Matter of fact, let me get this right here. Let me get the scripture, okay? Because I always ask myself, you know, whenever I'm going through things, you know, one thing that cheers me up, I ask myself, but do you have the chief things of life, you know? Okay? If we have the chief things of life on this side, hey, we're doing good, man. Okay? Let me get this in the scriptures. Okay? That's something I ask myself. Whenever I'm going through things or feeling a certain way, you know, things might not be going exactly how I want to go. But then I ask myself, I say, but do you have the chief things of life? And let's see. Let's read it. Sirach 29 and 21. It says the chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. And if we have those things, hey, we on the money, man. And we know the truth. Oh, man, we doing real good. We know the truth. We understand the truth. Okay? The name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, we know who we are. We understand prophecy. And we have water, bread, clothing, in the house to cover shame. Hey, we doing good, man. Okay? That's why the scriptures say let go of the immortal thoughts, man. Remember, we're not here to... We were not brought on this side. Okay? To live it up. Now, you have certain brothers that have a little bit more than other brothers, but the Lord has set the balance. Remember, the Lord balanced everything out. And those brothers that have a little bit more, guess what? They're able to help a little bit more. And those brothers that have a little, guess what? They still can help. At the end of the day, man, we're on a mission to get to the kingdom. We're thinking about salvation. We're not trying to build a kingdom within this kingdom because this kingdom is going to be destroyed. Right? It says 2nd Ezra 14, 14, let go from the mortal thoughts. See, those are mortal thoughts, man. These people worry about, oh, what I'm going to do, oh, what I'm going to eat. Matter of fact, let me pull this up. Something just came to mind. What Yahweh Shai said, right? See, we have something called faith, okay? To the end of the day, man, you know, we trust Yahweh Shai, Shai, Yahweh Shai. Remember, we're on a mission, Okay? We're here to uh, chant this kingdom down. Exhort the elect. Comfort the elect with these words. Speak comfort unto Jerusalem. Okay? Tell them the good news that Yahweh Shai, that the Most High Yahweh has given us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai. Okay? And for those of us that fear Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, we have great riches, man. Okay? Even though this present life might seem to be what it is, we know that this is not the end all be all, man. There's something greater and better that's that's coming and it's being it's being established right now with the Lord raising up his people, the Israelites. But it says 2nd Ezra 14, 14, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of men, put off put off now the weak nature. And see these mortal people, they worry about they run around to and fro, what are they gonna do, you know, faithless, trying to do it their own way, you know. But look, if you're not doing it according to the way of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, everything that you're doing is going to come to naught. You see? 
15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste to and haste thee to flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. And we live in a time of judgment, man. Okay, at the end of the day, money cannot buy you out of judgment. You know, the things the Lord is about to bring upon this earth. It's only the, those who fear and have been doing things that please the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. Okay? So, if we, hey, whatever our current condition is right now, man, hey, that's what the Most High got us at. That's what, he, that's what we need to complete the mission, man. All right? Kingdom-minded, right? Matthew 6 and 30. It says, uh, this in red, our Lord, Yahweh Shah speaking, right? I'm going to start at 30. It said, Wherefore, if the Most High so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And Yahweh Shah was big on faith, man, because we're faith-based Israelites. Okay? 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. See? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. See, the heavenly Father, he knows what we need, man. He's the Father. He knows what the household needs, man. Okay? And yeah, the most high sometimes he'll throw a little extra, a little bone here or there. You know? But at the end of the day, hey, the Father's going to make sure that his sons and his daughters have shoes Clothes, bread, water, house to cover shame for the most part, man. If we have those things which are the chief things of life, guess what? We on the money, man. Hey, we're doing better than a lot of people, man. You know, there's people out here sleeping on the street, sleeping in their car. Don't even know where their next meal is going to come from, but yet we have food and raiment, man. That's why the script is safe. Let's get that right quick. Okay? This is First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 8, it says, I'm going to start at 7. I'm going to start at 6. First Timothy 6 and 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. That's why the scripture talks about putting out our eyes upon things that are not. You know, these ages, Paul said the fashion of this world going to pass away. None of these things or possession that we have on this side is going to the kingdom of heaven, man. The only thing leaving this, this earth in Babylon is the spirit. And the Lord has a new body. Even these bodies that we're in right now, they're not going to the kingdom of heaven. The Lord has new bodies prepared for the elect. You see? Your favorite car, your clothes, or whatever items you might eat, hey, all those things are going to be destroyed, man. You see? That's why the scriptures say in Proverbs, I think it's 23, it said, Would thou set thy eyes upon that which is not? This fashion, this world going to be passed away, man. It's going to be a new earth. New things, you see? Verse 8, it said, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. So we have food and raiment, man. We should be content. Okay? Let's get the word content. Because it said, Guidance with contentment is great gain. Content, it said, to rest or be satisfied. To give satisfaction to. It says satisfied. That's the point. Let me see. Content. It says as an adjective. Literally held or contained within limits. Having a desire limited to present enjoyments. Satisfied. Right. We're satisfied with our portion, man. Okay. The Lord has gave us everything we need to accomplish the mission. Like I say. And sometimes the Lord throw a little extra here and there, man. And that's a bonus. All right. But at the end of the day, the Lord's going to give us exactly what we need to keep going, man. Right? But it say back in Matthew 6 and 33, it said, But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So at the end of the day, we're here to just work and do things pleasing in the eyes of Yahweh Shemiah Washai. And he's going to take care of it, man. Okay? Those are just weak mortal thoughts, man. Really, which goes back into having little faith. The Heavenly Father knows who we need. We just have to trust in the Lord and do what we're told, man. He said, go out there and teach the word. Compel them to come in. And watch how he just started to add things on. What you need. Right? Verse 34, it said, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought 
for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So at the end of the day, man, we hey, basically the scriptures say uh, he that dwell with wisdom will live uh, without care, man. I don't mean you just walk around willy nilly like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna do this. No, it's just at the end of the day we're not putting these worries or being burdened by these things, man. The scriptures say, right? We're to cast a burden upon the Lord, man. Okay. It's um Psalm 55 and 22. It says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Look at this word. Look at this word burden. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> Excuse me. The word burden is Yahab. It says burden, lot, that which is given. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Type in the word burden. Let's type burden in the online etymology and see what it say. Burden. It's a burden. A load that which is born or carried. A load weight. So we put the, hey, look, things we can you know, we, we do what we do. We pray to the Lord, you know, and there's certain things that we can handle. And certain things be out, be out of our control, man. And we just pray to you, how about you, man? I was shy, like, Lord, I need help. You know, that's why we, that's where prayer comes in, you know. Uh, uh, even fasting at times, man. Excuse me. <laughs> right? Because the scripture said prayer is good with fasting, man. Let me get that. These are the tools that we use, man. These things are written for a reason, man. Okay? We have to apply these things. You know? It's uh, Tobit 12 and 8. It says prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much than much with unrighteousness. And see, these people, they seem to be doing good, but look how they living. They have a horrible lifestyle. They worship different gods. They do all type of different things in their life that the scriptures speak against, but yet they prosper. The scriptures say we're not to fret ourselves because of evildoers, man. Let them people have it. Because at the end of the day, as the scriptures say, they're going to realize they sold themselves for not. You see, and though they seem to prosper in this life at this present moment, when the, when the Lord really brings the hammer down and allows Esau to really come in with that great wrath, they're going to realize how really poor they are, man. See, but with the elect, it's not so. Because they've been gathering faith as a treasure, man. Okay, the tables are turning, man. But they say, it is better to give alms than to lay up gold, for alms doth deliver from death. See? Doing this work, man, it's the, the greatest alms you can give. Now, of course, we give alms. We help one another. Right? The scripture said, help not a wicked person. All right? But we help the brothers, those that's laboring in his faith, that, but the believers. Right? For alms are delivered from death and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. And these people that, that disregard the word of the Most High, you know, they go out here and do what they want to do. Guess what? They're enemies to their own life, man. So when these things and calamities and judgments come upon them, guess what? They're not going to be able to escape. Okay? Because they trust in Egypt. They trust in their money. They trust in their own way. See? But we trust in the Lord. Right? I want to get this word sustained. It's kawal. It's say to support, nourish. See? The Lord going to support and nourish the elect, man. All right, so we just cast the burden on the Lord, man. Okay? I'm going to read that in the NLT, verse 22. It says, give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Because at the end of the day, right, does that mean we're not going to fall sometimes or, or mess up? No. But see, the Lord is with the elect, man. And everything the elect go through is a learning process, man. All right? Everything ain't always a loss, man. Remember, we're, we're gonna uh, we're walking this. Uh, it said when you come to serve the Lord, we put our soul for temptation, man. All right, we're gonna have experiences in this truth, man. We're gonna learn. We're gonna learn as we're learning these scriptures. We're gonna go through life, and we're gonna learn certain things, man. You know, certain lessons the Lord's gonna place upon us. It's gonna get us actually sharper, right? Psalm thirty-seven and twenty-three. It said, "The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way." Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. See? 
I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. So at the end of the day, Yahabashim Yahweh Shai, he's going to maintain the cause of the elect. Even if they slip, they're not going to be utterly cast down for the most highest with that man. You see? So we have nothing to fear but Yahabashim Yahweh Shai, man. That's our fear at the end of the day. But remember, we have a lively hope, man. Okay, the Lord going to take care of it, man. Whatever we have in our life that we need or things ain't going. Hey, sometimes we have to realize, too, that when some things that we might want, the most high, like, you don't need that. And that's part of uh, trusting the Lord, too, man. It might even be something that you desire, but the most high, like, he, hey, the heavenly father might not have it there for a reason. And we have to learn to, to, uh, to accept that, man. Because the scripture talking about, right? Let's get this in Sirach. It tells us not to force the course of the river, man. Sometimes we can, we can force something, you know, and end up uh, 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 messing up our own situation, man. For example, right? You know, I know a lot of brothers, you know, we deal with, uh, some brothers have women, some don't, right? And then you go out your way and you try to get a woman, you force the course of it, and now you pray to the Lord, man, please, Lord, take this woman away. You see what I'm saying? Just showing that one example. You know, it could be anything, but that just came to mind, you know, because it'd be a reason, man. All right. Remember, Paul talked about serving the Lord without distraction, man. Some things that we might desire or want will bring nothing but distractions into our life, man. You see, and the main mission is to do what? It's to teach the word, watch over the sheep, man, and defend the gospel. Right. Sirach 4 and 26, it says, be not ashamed to confess thy sins. And force not the course of the river. So we can't force things, man. Whatever meant to be in our life, whatever it may be, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, hey, he gonna deliver it. And you gonna find it sitting right at your doorstep, man. That's trusting the Lord and just letting the Lord do what he do. All right? You need a job? Guess what? Now, of course, it's a faith that our works is dead. So, yeah, we pray and you gotta put action behind that, that uh, prayer, man. You know? But guess what? You will know if it's for you because the Lord is going to set it up so perfectly. You're going to be like, nah, this is where I'm supposed to be. You see? If it's, if you're having a hard time and you find yourself struggling or it ain't working, you're trying to fight, make it fit, hey, that's not what the Lord wants you to do, man. Now you're forcing the course of the river, man. All right? So let me get these last couple of precepts, man. It's just something that's on my spirit, you know? Because we're at the end of this thing, man. All right? We're at the end of this thing, and hey, we're to keep our eyes single, man. Forget about this world. This world is going down the drain. It's Proverbs 13 and 7. It says, There is that maketh himself rich, yet have nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet have great riches. And guess what? Because brothers have talents, man. Brothers are very uh, uh, knowledgeable about things, charismatic. You no, know, brothers can easily go out here and, and, and make money and have businesses and be successful in certain things, but guess what? We forsake all those things to serve you. How about Shimei All right, we forsake those things, and we just we're, we're fine with food and raiment, man. Because we're expecting something. We expect salvation. We expect the kingdom, with no eye have seen or ear have heard. Then we'll be able to chill and relax and really enjoy life, man. Okay, I'm talking about the scripture talking about how Jerusalem so dwells safely. I'm talking about true rest, man. Even people with money on this side, they don't really have true rest, man. Okay, but hey, the Lord going to allow us to have true rest. The scriptures say where rest is allowed, man. That's the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So we just want food and raiment, man. You know, don't worry about these people who seem, to, who seem as I say, right, who seem to be doing good because they don't have nothing. If you don't have your how about Shemi Shine, you're not doing this work, if you're not helping out the ministry, you don't have arms toward the ministry, you're not confessing the Lord, your how about Shemi Shine, you have nothing, man. Whether even though it seems that you might have everything, you have nothing. Okay? So Proverbs 30 and 7, it says, Two things have I required of thee, deny me them not before I die. 
Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? And that's what happened. Sometimes you want that extra money, right? Not saying that you're wicked if you, you know, because your, whatever your situation may be, only the Lord knows, right? But just an example, right? Sometimes you might ask for some extra money or certain things, and guess what? Those things you ask for end up taking you away from the Lord, man. I didn't heard the apostles and bishops and brothers many a times uh, give testimony about how guys hit money and got this and then fell out the truth, man. That's being full. Now you're denying the Lord. Now you left the truth. Now that, that thing that you asked for became a stumbling block. I see it all the time, man. A new job, new woman, family, whatever it may be, man. Right? They say, or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain. And the Lord told us not to be thieves, man. We don't got to go steal. We'll be just reading Psalm 37. I never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. We don't have to go out here and do that, man. We ain't gotta, the Lord never said live a life of a, being a thief. We ain't got to steal shit, man. All right? So at the end of the day, we ask the Lord just food convenient for us, man. Don't give us too much, Lord, but don't give us too little because we don't want to go out here and live a life of being a, a, a thief and shit, man. You know? Because that shows a lack of faith. Okay? Oh, the Lord ain't going to provide, so I got to go out here and do what I got to do. No, that's a lack of faith, man. You ain't got to do that, man. All right? But at the end of the day, we want things just convenient for us, man. So we have the chief things in life, man. If we have the chief things in life, hey, we on the money. Because, man, a lot of people don't even have that, man. I see it every day. You know? Hey, if you ever take a shower, you have clean underwear, clothes, socks, water, food, raiment. Man, you on the money, man. Some brothers got cars. Come on, man. Hey, you're doing well, man. And you on, on top of that, first and foremost, you know the truth? Come on, dog. Come on, man. You understand prophecy? Come on, man. You on the money. That's all you need. All right? That's all we need, right? Tobit 4 and 21. And fear not, my son, that we are made poor. For thou hast much wealth, if thou fear the Most High, and depart from all sin, and do that which is pleasing in his sight. So at the end of the day, man, don't fear because we've been made poor. All right? But we're rich in faith. We're rich in faith, man. <clears throat> and we're doing things that's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Okay? And we expect that change, man. We're looking for those new bodies where we can be perfect in the eyes of the Lord, man. Okay? So don't fret yourself because of evildoers, man. It's say, for we have much wealth if we fear the most high, man. So we're rich because we have the fear of your how about Shimei I was shot. So Lord, we're less than edifying and exhorting them to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, Shalom, Kwam Nasharala, to the elect.